During the Cretaceous, tyrannosaurs dominated the Northern Hemisphere, and were surely some of the most infamous and formidable predators to have ever existed. They came in many different shapes and sizes, and each of these animals are unique in their own right. So given the time of year, I find it appropriate to give the spotlight to a small, but nonetheless fearsome tyrannosaurid, that being Nanuxaurus, the Northern Tyrant. The holotype of Nanuxaurus was discovered in 2006 at the Kikak Tegosik Quarry in the north of Alaska. These remains were first attributed to the Albertosaurine Gorgosaurus, and then to the related Albertosaurus. However, additional material and closer examination and comparison with other Tyrannosaurids showed more similarities to Tyrannosaurine forms than to Albertosaurine. Through this, the specimen was recognised as a species new to science, and was described and named by Anthony Fiorillo and Ronald Tchaikovsky in 2014, naming it Nanuxaurus hoglandi, meaning polar bear lizard. The specific name honouring the philanthropist Forrest Hogland for his work in philanthropy and cultural institutions. The holotype of Nanuxaurus consisted of disarticulated parts of a skull, which included the nasal branch of the right maxilla, a partial skull roof including partial parietals and frontals, and the front of the left dentary, with no postcranial elements being found, and as such, is far from complete. But even from these remains, we can still get a glimpse into the size, phylogenetic placement, and even age of the animal. From the few remains that were found, the skull of the individual was determined to be around 60 to 70 centimetres in length based off of other Tyrannosaurines, and when determining its phylogenetic placement, Nanuxaurus was found to be a derived Tyrannosaurine, being a sister taxon to the clade containing Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus. This was supported by the characteristic of a dorsoventrally tall, paired sagittal crest on the frontal, which is a notable skull feature on these particular animals. As well as this, the dorsomedial edge of the maxilla is marked by deep pockets separated by pronounced transverse ridges, which in life would have formed a strong peg and socket articulation between the dorsal margin of the maxilla and the ventrolateral edge of the nasal. The same kind of deeply interlocking nasomaxillary contact is a well documented character that is also present in more derived tyrannosaurines. As mentioned earlier, the estimated skull length of around 60 to 70 centimetres is unusually small for a derived Tyrannosaurine, and so, was this individual animal even fully grown at all? From looking at the remains, the previously mentioned interlocking nasomaxillary contact is only present in developmentally mature individuals of derived Tyrannosaurines. In juvenile animals, the nasal maxilla contact is either smoothly grooved or bears only weak scalloping, with the presence of the feature being indicative that the holotype of Nanuxaurus was indeed a mature animal. In comparing the skull size of Nanuxaurus to the proportions of more complete tyrannosaurs, the estimated length of Nanuxaurus is around 6 metres, or about half the size of a tyrannosaurus. Nanuxaurus existed in the Prince Creek Formation in what is now Alaska around 69 million years ago, living near the end of the Mesozoic. The western landmass Nanuxaurus existed on, being a Laramidia, was effectively divided into northern and southern provinces by the late Campanian by differing topographies, which increased dinosaur diversity below and above the separation, effectively creating an island within Laramidia. Vertebrates have shown striking diversification patterns resulting from geographic barriers and changes, with Nanuxaurus being an example of this diversification. Although northern Alaska would have been warmer than present during the Cretaceous, the region would still have experienced many profound seasonal changes in light on an annular basis. Herbivorous dinosaurs with a lack of food during the dark winter months would be forced to migrate to find food further south, leaving predators with little to eat. This could explain the small size of Nanuxaurus, as a large animal needs more resources to survive, and over time, only the smallest animals could manage to find enough food to survive, eventually forming into a new taxon. Like other Tyrannosaurs, Nanuxaurus would have utilised their incredible eyesight and extraordinary sense of smell to detect and bring down prey, which would have included Ceratopsians like Pachyrhinosaurus and Hadrosaurs, although adults would have typically been too much to handle for this smaller predator. Despite being known from little in the way of remains, what we do have is nonetheless interesting, and still important in understanding aspects of the biology, size, and placement of Nanuxaurus within the story of life. 
The discovery of Nanuxaurus not only provided new insights into Tyrannosaurid evolution, but also in the ways of dinosaur adaptation, showcasing how these animals adjusted to different climates and resource availability. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.